Hey guys, it's Saleh. Today I want to do something a bit different. I want to write a scalping strategy for the 15 minutes time frame on the BTC UCT chart. So let's get right into it. So the main indicator that I want to use for this strategy is called the super trend. And as the name indicates, it will tell us the direction of the trend. Now when it's green, we're in an uptrend. When it's red, we're in a downtrend. Also notice that when we are in an uptrend, the value for it, which is displayed here, is actually below the current price. And when we are in a downtrend, the value for it is above the current price. And we're going to use this to write our strategy. And it's actually a pretty good indicator if you go back in time. All right, so let's go to Jesse and first create a new strategy. I'm going to call it Scalper Super. And if I go to my editor, and search for it I will find it so now this is the code generated by Jesse when we initiated this strategy from the dashboard now I want to use the super trend so let's define a new property I want to call it trend and in it I want to say that the variable s equals to ta super trend I'm gonna pass the current trends and I won't pass any other arguments because I want to use the default ones. So this is it. Now the super trend indicator in Jesse will give us two values, the trend and the changed. Now the change will tell us whether or not the direction has changed. So for example, if I zoom in here and the value that Jesse will give us is one because the direction of the trend just changed, but we don't really need that in our strategy. So I'm not going to use that. The only thing that I want is this value here, which is the value that is creating this line here or this one. So that would be the trend value. So again, I will say if the current price is above the trend value, we're in uptrend. So I will say if the current price is bigger than this value, we're in uptrend and I want to return one. Otherwise, we're in a downtrend. So we're going to return minus one. I will use this to write my shoot long function. So I will say whether or not the current trend equals one. And for my shoot short, I will just do the opposite. Now, by the way, if you are trading the spot market, you're not going to use this function, but because I'm trading futures, I will use it. So I will say return whether or not the current trend equals minus one. So this is it. For my position sizing, first, I want to open the position with my entire capital. And the entry price is going to be the current price in that moment. In other words, we're going to use a market order. So I will say the entry equals the current price. And the quantity is going to be utils size to quantity. But for the first one, I will pass in my entire available margin. For this, the second one, I will pass in the entry. And the precision, the default is fine. But I will set the fee rate to the fee rate of the exchange that I'm trading on, which would be self.fee rate. Okay, so I will say buy equals quantity and then entry and for my short function i will do the same and i don't need to update should cancel entry because again this strategy is using the market order to enter the position and what the should cancel entry order does is if you have a limit order or a stop order for entering your positions that are pending it will decide whether or not to cancel them so that you can start from scratch and do the calculations again but in this case we only have a market order for entering our trades so it will get executed every time so we don't need this so i will just let it be all right so now we need to define the exit rule for our strategy now what i want to do is when i get a trade I want to use the ATR to set my stop loss and the take profit. Now first, let me show you the ATR on the chart. Now what this indicator does, it will give me the average true range. In other words, it's telling me how much on average the, every new candle is changing. So for example, in this point in time, the value for it is approximately 300. So that means the price is on average changing 300 on every new candle, which makes sense because we're trading BTC, which has a high price. So I'm going to use this for my stop loss and I will also use it for my tech profit. So let's go here and I want to say when a new position is opened, that's when I set my stop loss and tech profit. So I will say on open position, if it's a long position, 
I will say the surplus is so first I should give it a quantity and I'm gonna give it the entire quantity of my position so I will say self position dot quantity and the second argument which is the price I want to say the entry price of my position which would be self position entry price we could also pass self dot price because it's a market order the current price and the entry price of my position would be the same at this point but I'm gonna use the position dot entry price and it's gonna be the current ATR which we can get by saying TA dot ATR and then passing the current candles multiplied by an integer number now usually a number such as two or three works well but for this one I will use 2.5 and my take profit is going to be very similar except that you know it's going to be above the current price so we are adding the ATR value to our entry price instead of subtracting it however if I set the 2.5 the risk reward ratio of my trades will be 1 and considering that we're paying for fees and stuff I don't really like this number so I will use a bit higher number such as 3.2 now by the way the more you increase your risk to reward number yes you will have better trades that are more worth it but the win rate of your strategy will be lower so for example if I put the number 2 here the win rate of my strategy would be much higher than if I put something like 3.2. But on the other hand, yes, my win rate will increase, but it doesn't mean your profits will increase too. So I will use this and I will do the opposite if it's for a short position. So I will say, okay, the copilot is smart enough to help us here. So I'm just doing the opposite thing for a short entry. So now I have a completed strategy. Yes, it's not improved and we're going to improve it in a second, but I think we have a good enough strategy to actually execute our first backtest. So let's go back to Jesse and open a new backtest. Now I'm going to use Binance Perpetual Futures for this backtest, but it's not my go-to exchange for live trading. For live trading, I will probably use either Bybit or Apex Pro, but for this purpose, this is fine. I will change the time frame to 15 minutes and I will use the scalper super. And as for the period, I want to go back in time to the beginning of 2022, which was a really bad year for crypto. And I want to do it up until the last month. And I will also make sure the fast mode is on and the benchmark because I want to compare it to the market. Okay, this looks good. Let's run it. Okay, so obviously we're not in profit yet. However, you can never make a good strategy with only one indicator, right? And we're only using the super trend with one time frame for our entry rule. So the first thing I want to do is to make sure that we're only taking trades if we are indeed in a trending market. And I like to use a favorite indicator of mine called ADX, Average Directional Index. What this, okay, let's remove this. Okay, so what this does, it will give us a strength of the current trend. So for instance, here, where we are in a clear trend, the value of it rises. But when we are in a place like here, which you could say is a ranging market, the value of it drops. So it's not telling us the direction of the trend, it's just telling us the strength of it. So the way we use it is usually we specify a threshold and say, if the value of the ADX is above this threshold, we will take a trade, otherwise we won't. So let's go back to our strategy and I will define the value for ADX like this. I will say return whether or not the ADX value is bigger than 30 or not. And now I can update my should long and say and self.adx. I will also do the same for should short. Okay, so let's go back and try again. All right, so the results clearly improved. So that's good. We are moving into the right direction. So the first thing I want to do is this technique that I learned in a book called High Probability Trading Strategies. Now, basically what this book is saying that we can always increase our odds to our favor if we use a bigger time frame for everything. So for instance, if we are using the super trend to determine the current trend, instead of only using the current time frame, we can use a bigger time frame. So yes, we are trading with the 15 minutes time frame, but what if we determine the overall trend using the 4 hours time frame? That happened to be one of the best techniques that I always use in my strategies. However, if you do this in other platforms, especially on TradingView, when you're backtesting there, you're going to fall victim for the look ahead bias. So that means you will be using data or the price data from the future. 
that isn't realistic. Now, I don't want to explain that in this video because it will get really long but long story short when you're using bigger time frames with jesse you won't fall into that trap and if you want to know more about the lookalike bias go ahead and look it up there are some scary stories about it all right so let's go back to my strategy and before i had just one trend function that was using the super trend now i'm gonna rename this one into short trend and i will copy this paste it here and then define another one called long and I want to change the candles so instead of being the current candles I want it to be the candles for another time frame but because I might want to use those other candles in other parts of my code I will go up here and define it here so I will say long term candles would be get candles and the first parameter is the current exchange. So I will pass a self exchange. The second one is the symbol. I will pass self symbol. And for time frame, I will pass four hours. Now you could pass anything you like, but the four hours I think works pretty well with the 15 minutes. Now I can go back to long trend function and change this from candles into long term candles. So now I can update my entry to say and long term equals one and for my short entry rule i can say the opposite so let's go back to jesse and give it another try now remember this number and we had a huge improvement so in fact we're in profit now but still not enough but it's in profit so this is really really good the max drawdown is also significantly lower than what we had before the win rate is at 47% okay so this is much better but now I want to use another technique that works really well for me and that is to define a moving average now imagine we could only take long trades if we were in a bull run now how do we define that well we can do it with a simple EMA moving average exponential and setting the value of it to 200 but not only that I also want to use the four hour time frame but this one is with the 50 minutes. So this will significantly make the odds in our favor. What else it would do is to lower the number of trades we're taking because the thing is, because we're trading on the 15 minutes time frame, we're also paying a lot of trading fees. I mean, imagine if we hadn't paid this much in fees, then we would have been sitting on a pretty good profit, right? So that's also helpful. So let's go back to our code and I will define another one. We'll call it long moving average and in it I will say my moving average equals TA let's use SMA here and yes I will pass the long term candles and the period must be 200 now if the current price is bigger than the moving average I will return one otherwise return minus one so now I will also add this to my entry rules let's go to shoot long and say and long moving average equals one and also go to shoot short and say long moving average must equal minus one okay so now let's go back and give it another try and by the way we're getting this error because even though we're using the four hours time frame in our strategy we didn't define the data route for it in the dashboard and with the new version of jesse if this is the case your backtest won't completely fail but it will warn you here and it's still finished okay so look at this the result significantly improved in fact considering the max drawdown of us which is much lower than what the market had here you could say we beat the market but here's the thing we didn't do proper position sizing so so far we were opening positions with our entire capital and i almost never do that in my actual trades what i usually do for my position sizing is that as a general rule i almost never risk more than two percent of my capital for each trade so let's go to my code where i set the position so here i was passing the entire capital i want to only risk three percent so let's say this let's copy this 
and instead I will use another utility function called risk to quantity. Uh, the first one is the capital and again I'm gonna pass the available margin and the second one is risk per capital and as I just said it's gonna be 3% and the entry is going to be entry the other one is the surplus. So that's very important that at the moment that you're opening your position and specifying the size of your position, you should know what your surplus is going to be. And we specify this surplus here, right? So let's copy this. Come here. And I'm going to say S sub equals this. But instead of the self position that entry price, I will say the current price, right? So here I will pass this stop and again the fee rate is going to be the current fee rate. Let's remove this and I'm going to do the same for short position. All right, so let's rerun the backtest and see how it changes. All right, so before we, we weren't really beating the market, but now by the end of this period, we're actually beating the market. So that's how effective this change was. Okay, so this looks much better and we are indeed beating the market, but just as an experiment, let's also do something else. I wanna define another ADX, but this time using the bigger time frame and see how that works. So I'm gonna call this one long ADX and pass in the long-term candles and in my entry rule, I will quickly add it. Let's rerun this. Okay, it didn't help much. Let's also try using EMA instead of the SMA for the long-term moving average. Okay, yeah, this is slightly better. The max throttle decreased. Yeah, but the long-term ADX didn't really help, so I'm gonna remove this. And give it one last try. Okay, this looks much better. Much better. Yeah, especially here, where we had a nasty downtrend, we were up significantly. So that's good, but in here we didn't do great. We also had a not so great time here. Okay, so let's not forget that this is just the initial version of a strategy. We didn't do any optimization because if we do add some hyperparameters, for example, and optimize it using the optimization mode of Jesse, we're gonna get much better results. And we're also still paying lots of trading fees here, and depending on the plan that you have on the exchange or whichever exchange you're trading this number is also going to change a lot. So for example, if you can get some kind of trading fee discounts, it will be really helpful with this strategy. Now, I spent like an afternoon on this strategy and that obviously isn't enough for finding a really good one. So I'm gonna keep working on this strategy and trying to improve the results, maybe run some optimization using the optimization mode. And when I do, I will submit that one as a premium strategy to our strategy listing page on our website. Now, if you haven't checked out this page, make sure to do so. All right, so this was the first strategy video that I made. I don't know if you guys liked it or not. So if you did, and if you want me to continue this path and create more strategy videos, please make sure to let me know in the comment section. And also we have a giveaway. A random person who likes this video, subscribes to the channel and posts a comment is going to receive 1 million bonk token. All right, now it's time to pick the winner of the last video. And the winner is, I cannot pronounce his username, but his comment is found you from the Apex video. Now I'm thinking if I should get lifetime subscription, not to miss out on things FOMO in action, I should probably get to know Jesse first. Yes, that's a good idea. Thank you so much for your comment. Please reach out to me so that I can send you your bank tokens. All right, so if there's a specific type of strategy that you want me to cover for the next video, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.